This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Guardian Metal Resources has signed a binding letter of intent with Henk Eit Resources to acquire an option on the Tempitute Tungsten Mine and Mill in Nevada. The project, previously known as the Emerson or Black Dog Mine, has historical tungsten production but ceased operations in the 1980s due to a market collapse. And CEO Oliver Friesen, who's joining us today, commented in the RNS this morning that we have come to the conclusion that the macro setup for this key defence metal warrants our investment decision to gain more exposure to this critical commodity. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Oliver. How are you? I'm doing well, Mark. Very good. Thank you. Looking forward to catching up on this. So, I mean, just looking at some of the key points there. So you've got a 5,000 US dollar deposit, which allows you to do a 90 day due diligence period. Then uh, you can uh, make a $50,000 payment and 150,000 Guardian Metal shares to get to the definitive agreement. And then biannual payments of 25,000 to maintain this option. And to fully acquire it, you have to confirm a minimum tungsten resource within three years which will trigger bonus payments, but they are capped at two million US dollars. So, I mean, first of all, this has probably taken a few investors by surprise here. So I wonder if we can get some rationale behind this from you. It's not a lot of yeah. money that's uh, under consideration here, but why bother looking at something else when you already have Pilot Mountain? Yeah, no, we, we sat down as, as a board, um, you know, we do this on a quarterly basis just to understand and look at our go our going forward strategy. Um, you know, we have positioned ourselves in this tungsten space four years ago. We've continued to learn more and more about this metal and why it's so important for the U.S. military fusion, all these other things. Uh, and, and knowing we have what is believed to be the largest undeveloped tungsten deposit on U.S. soil is a brilliant start. That puts us in the driver's seat. Um, but the reality is with, with, with this export ban happening in the antimony space, people and investors and, 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 and those who are involved in, in this space in North America are now sniffing around looking at other assets in the U.S. Uh, and we know this for a fact. So with our asset and with the work, the great work we've done to position ourselves in this U.S. tungsten market, you know, we didn't want to allow other groups to come in and, and take our lunch. You know, we have this asset, but... Well, let's 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 look at other assets that that could also complement and be accretive. I think is the key word here to our to our pilot mountain offering. So you know we're a, a ballpark forty million U.S. market cap company, but as a board, how do we get to that next level up? How do we grow this business? Uh, and instead of just sitting there and letting other people come in and start to acquire a tungsten right in advance of when this big move is going to happen, well, let's look at, at at cornering the market a little bit. Let's get our hands on more tungsten. Uh, in advance of that. So that's really, it comes down to a strategy as a board that we put together. And our goal is to grow this business. That's what we're, that's what we're in this position to do. Uh, and we think there's a huge opportunity in the tungsten space. So just to sit on our hands and go, okay, we're just going to explore and, and push Pilot Mountain for it, I think would be us, that'd be a huge disservice to our shareholders because we want to grow this thing and find a way to a much bigger valuation. So by acquiring this asset uh, in advance of what we think is going to happen here before other groups kind of get their hands on it, um, this positions our investors much, much better for what we think is going to come here and, and it positions them before we think we can really grow this company uh, into a significant uh, tungsten player in the U.S. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a call option effectively on tungsten, taking into consideration the past producing elements of this project. I mean, why aren't the current owners doing anything with it? Why are they sort of willing to sell it to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really a question of financial resources um, and, and working with the vendors. I mean, we've spent some time with the vendors now, fantastic group. Uh, they've, been, they've been an absolute joy to deal with as we've negotiated this, this deal and, and, and come to the signing phase. Um, you know, the reality is one of the, the big sort of selling points of Guardian is, well, we have forged really fantastic relationships within the tungsten space. Um, so for a private group who, who doesn't have that advantage, you know, to bring something like this to our into our fold, well, that asset immediately gets the benefits, the same benefits that our Pilot Mountain project uh, has based on the work we've done in the tungsten space. So it, it was, a, you know, a really mutually 
beneficial sort of agreement. And we, it was, you know, the pitch, like I said, we made was, hey, we have great relationships and this asset, if it comes into our fold, will benefit from those relationships and the relationships that are to come here. So uh, it's a really, um, you know, they want to see this project advanced. Um, we want to continue to bolster our offering in the U.S. and in the tungsten space. So it was uh, it was really a win-win for both parties. So we're looking forward to working with this group to obviously do the due diligence. We need to get through the next 90 days. Um, a lot of that work is is is, is well underway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if we do sign the definitive working with with the, the vendor group to, to advance this asset and really realize the value that we think is there. Uh, and, and that can be shown here with further work and exploration and development. Okay. So if you were to go ahead and exercise that option, then what would the next sort of bits of work look like? I mean, you must have thought about it. You've been looking at this project for a while. But also, how does it does it have any synergies with Pilot Mountain? I mean, is there also risk here of diverting management attention, getting distracted from Pilot Mountain and, of course, Garfield as well? So, yeah, what's the bigger picture here that you're looking at? Yeah, so just firstly on, on the distraction bit, um, and that's a question I've gotten this morning is, is are you going to be distracted? Um, and what I say is, you know, we are a growing company. And, and the question that we asked as management was, well, how do we go from where we're at now to that next level up? Uh, and we've grown as a business. You know, we're not a, a, a new IPO, 7 million pound market cap with, you know, a million and a half in the bank, and just kind of the board running everything. We've grown considerably. Uh, we have a, a, an operations team in Nevada, in Hawthorne right now, running the drilling at Pilot Mountain. So I don't look at this as a distraction anymore. I look at, look at this as this is our ability and this is how we get to that next level is by finding assets that make sense within the portfolio that, that we can leverage our current relationships in the tungsten space. So we have the team. I mean, we wouldn't take this on if we were stretched too thin. Um, we have the team that we can push this forward. Uh, so in terms of synergies, um, you know, that's, we, we still need to figure out what that looks like. You know, the reality is the the assets are about 290 kilometers away. I've done that drive myself, um, you know, using, utilizing the same teams we have on the ground is an obvious one going forward, longer term, how do these two assets potentially have synergies in, in a, say, a production scenario? Um, well, they're close, uh, you know, there's existing infrastructure at Pilot Mountain, um, you know, a lot of. Other projects in, in, in different metals, what they can do is they can truck concentrate and ship concentrate together. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that we can, that we can play this. Um, and there's also there's ex- existing APT facilities in Nevada that can actually process tungsten concentrate um, owned by not not by GTP, by but another group. Um, so there, it's really early days here. And, and just, you know, first out of the gate here is just having the ability for crews that are that are working on on Pilot Mountain to be able to move and shift to, to Tempayu to go and, and work on some of this due diligence in the next steps um, already shows us that there's huge opportunity here. And really it's, it's the synergies will figure that out. And we have some ideas now how that, how that all looks together, but really it's, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of increasing our offering and looking to grow this business from where we're at now. And by bringing on a very substantial asset like this, uh, if we are successful through the due diligence period, we become a much bigger player in the tungsten space. And once again, okay. before the market really understands what's going on here, and it's starting to happen, looking to, to corner and sort of roll up more tungsten opportunities in the US in advance of that, giving our investors exposure to that upside uh, that we believe is to come. Okay, that definitely explains yeah the bigger picture thinking here. That's very clear, Oliver, on the strategy there. Just on the, what's currently available at Tempayute, with the mill, I mean, would, could you look to perhaps use existing infrastructure and the mill there, yeah, to 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 do to process the pilot mountain work, or are we too, or are we too early to think about this at the moment? Yeah, and, and sorry, I realized, Mark, I didn't answer your first question, which is what are we going to do next uh, at, at Tempayu? So obviously, the, you know, if if you look at the press release, and we'll continue to put out more information about this asset, uh, but it's substantial. Uh, and just one thing to note here is. The, the majority of the mineralization is located on what's called patented ground. Now, this is private land. This is not what we have at, at Pilot Mountain. Now, there's sort of three categories of land in the U.S. There's the uh, unpatented ground, which is located on like, forest service land, which is, you know, permitting is very challenging and difficult and slow. Then there's the BLM, which is where all of our current assets are located. That's a huge step up in, in terms of permitting. I mean, we've seen how quickly things can get permitted. 
The next step above that and sort of the preeminent ground that you can hold in the U.S. is patented. So it is private property. Uh, which means that the, the requirements when it comes to permitting and other things related to, to pushing these assets forward, we own the ground. We own the actual surface rights as well. Once again, if we are successful in moving through with this, this, this definitive agreement. Uh, so just to note that, you know, the, the requirements for what, you know, for the permitting and everything else is much, much different when you have private actual ground located in the state of Nevada. What are we going to do next? I mentioned uh, in the RNS or we mentioned that we've sampled uh, a lot of the high grade dumps. Um, so this is very, very high grade material that uh, visually speaking, I've looked at the rock myself, um, that they, they didn't have the technology to um, to process back in the, in the late 80s. Um, that technology has advanced considerably. So there's a lot of material uh, that we've sampled. I've sampled pretty much every one of those of those areas when I was there. Um, so that's an opportunity potentially is to see what is left there at, at surface or that's already been mined out. Uh, the other one is, is, the, is the tailings. Um, just about a, about two kilometers away from the existing mill right now. Um, you know, the, once again, the technology in the 80s to process and actually recover a lot of these metals was not what it is today. They were focused on the tungsten uh, and a bit of the zinc, but there's other metals there. I mean, just visually looking at these high grade um, uh, piles that exist, there's a lot of other metals there. Um, so we've gone, we've done, we've taken one sample from the dump. There will need to be um, further analysis done across the entire footprint there. It's a very large footprint. I was just there and, and, and was was digging through the, the upper kind of concrete layer to get to the actual tailings themselves. So there's an opportunity there. When it comes to the existing infrastructure, I mean, we'll, we'll put out some more photos and information about what exists on site. But this was a significant produce, producer in the 1980s. Um, so obviously there, there's there's wear and tear from, from the late 1980s on, but the existing um, substation and, and the power infrastructure and the water infrastructure, that's all still there and in very good, in very good shape. The, the substation is still active and, and supplies to, uh, power to the town of, of Rachel. So you could kind of just put the switch on, so to say, and you have active power to, to that, to that area. Um, how we utilize the existing infrastructure when it comes to the mill and the other facilities, um, we still need to figure that out. Obviously to have, oh, sorry, I hopped off there, uh, to have the existing mill there. Um, it's a lot easier to refurbish that than it is to go and, and lay a new slab of concrete and build something fresh. Um, so I've looked at all the infrastructure myself. A lot of it actually has been in, in, kept in quite good condition. Um, so sorry, I keep, on, I keep on hopping off there. Um, so it's it's still early days. You know, we've looked at it all ourselves and we're very impressed by what was there. Uh, and there's certainly ways that we can utilize this to really quickly move things along here when it comes to some of the opportunities around the existing high-grade stockpiles, the uh, the tailings, and then more importantly, the existing in-ground resource. And that's what we're really after here is, is bolstering our offering in the tungsten space and within Nevada and within the USA. So a lot of exciting angles that we're going to push forward here. Uh, and we're looking forward to announcing more as the DD progresses and hopefully we move to Infinitive and, and the next stages after that. Okay. Okay, good. So it's a little bit too early to be actually dis discussing what you would actually do with the project. This is really, as you say, a call option. You're looking now at the potential from the tailings and from the stockpiles there to go through your due diligence. But it could be that, um, yeah, you look to uh, build out your tungsten resources, Pilot Mountain, of course, uh, complementing that, and potentially, maybe, processing yourself on site at, um, at the new project. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it, it's early days here, but we have a very good idea as to what we think we can do here. Um, we've gone to the asset, we've walked the ground, we've looked at the infrastructure. Um, there's a reason that, you know, kind of very quickly after I, I was there, it was like, let's get this deal signed up. Uh, this asset makes a lot of sense within the Guardian Metal Stable. Um, so the, the key over the next 90 days sure. is getting the due diligence done. And, and then really we move on to, okay, what are we going to do now? We have some things in the background we're working on, but let's focus on, on kind of one thing at a time, which is the due diligence, uh, which is well underway. We have, you know, rock samples in the lab that are being rushed right now. Uh, the title opinion, all that kind of stuff is really important. Uh, and then once we get confidence in that, we move to definitive. And then that gives us the optionality to do all these exciting things and see the value that we can extract here from an asset that was really important to the U.S. in the late 1980s. Uh, and, and really, the, the key thing to remember here is, is the tungsten landscape has never been what it is until right now. 
Uh, and timing is everything in this space. And really in the rush, in the, in, in the wake of the Russia Ukraine war, this, this idea and concept around resource onshoring, especially in the US, is just such an important theme right now. And it's not going away. Uh, antimony, we're seeing now what's happening in the antimony space. And we were and are a first mover in the tungsten space. And if, if what ha- if what happens, what we or if, if what we think happens happens in the tungsten space, you know, we are positioned so perfectly and our investors are going to be exposed to that really exciting time. So this is just another feather in the cap. It's how we get from here where we're at now to what we think could be a much higher level. Obviously, a lot more work to do, but that's really the vision here is to grow this business uh, and bring this to the U.S. In a, as a much bigger offering. And could this potentially make the whole, let's say, Guardian Metals tungsten uh, angle more attractive to the grant funding that, of course, I know is being worked on in the background? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say too much on that, obviously. But, you know, what I can say is that tungsten is certainly one of the most critical metals in the U.S. right now um, because of the defense applications, because of the need for tungsten with ammunitions, because of the DLA stockpiling issues. So uh, it's 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 I, I know it's sort of, uh, you know, front and center in a lot of conversations in the U.S. right now with whether it's policymakers or government or downstream uh, consumers. It's tungsten 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 and we're seeing it now in the antimony space which has a lot of parallels in tungsten um so yeah we're looking to once again as i mentioned those those relationships that we've forged in the tungsten space well all of those same relationships and all of those 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 advantages that we that we now can can apply to pilot mountain well as with if we move into the definitive period our definitive uh, agreement with with tampayu that's an, that's another offering that we have, and a lot of those relationships we can leverage that, and so the synergies really probably come in there, which is well, we have existing relationships. Here's another asset that we now own. Let's look at ways to support both of them and bring this to the U.S. as a much bigger. Hey, we can supply a bigger percentage of the United States annual consumption requirements of tungsten. Look to replace the likes of China from that supply chain. So those are kind of the loftier goals we're looking at. Uh, a lot more work to be done, but that's this is one step along that path. Just a final thought, Oliver. I mean, you, do you feel that you're perhaps uh, at risk here of getting too uh, tungsten-eyed? Um, you know, really <laughs> placing all your bets on tungsten. <laughs> I mean, the great thing about both of these assets is they're they're not just tungsten. Um, you know, there there's you know we have copper, silver, and zinc at, at Pilot Mountain uh, at Tempayu. There there's historical reports which mention lots of other metals of interest. Um, so. Uh, Yes, we are getting a little bit starry-eyed, but at the same time, we've done the homework, we've done the research, and had the conversations around surrounding tungsten to know that this, we believe this is the right this is the right bet. Um, the ITIA conference is next week in Spain, so I'll, I'll be there uh, all week. It's the conference is sold out. I don't know if it's ever been sold out. Uh, there's about twenty meetings um, across about across a three day period with with you know policymakers, with downstream consumers, with other exploration development companies in North America. Um, we believe that the, 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 the position here in the tungsten space is so fantastic um, that we're happy to get a little bit starry-eyed. And really, by getting starry-eyed, we get our investors and, our, and then people that, that are interested in our business exposure to what we think will be a really exciting time in the tungsten space. So we, uh, and once again, it's with, with minimal outlay. Right. That's the key thing here is, is the vendor um, takes part in the success as we have success with the asset. And that's that's how we love to work on these things is, is we're, we're aligned in that in that regard. So um, we think tungsten is, is a fantastic metal. Everything we've heard, all the conversations are that there's a really exciting time brewing in this space. So what we're doing here is giving our investors further exposure to that, but also realizing that, you know, there's exposure to other metals here that are important as we kind of move into this commodities bull market here. So there's a lot to be excited about here. DD period is ongoing. It's it's well underway. Um, looking forward to get some final results from that. And then we'll announce to the market the next steps. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is a really next important step on our transition to what we believe can be a much bigger company with the U.S. tungsten focus, supplying a considerable amount of tungsten to the U.S. market. That's our that's our stretch goal here, uh, and with this with this asset, we're uh, we're one step closer to that.
Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Oliver Friesen, the CEO of Guardian Metal Resources. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.